Before we can go ahead and use those functions, it's very important that you understand the idea of observable and subscribers and subscription. So you can see that those functions, they're returning unobservable of users. And to illustrate this idea, I created an example and I'm going to walk you through it so that I can explain this to you so that you really understand what's going on here. So I'm going to navigate to the app component and right here. So in this app component, which is just a class with some fancy decorator and the constructor, I added some code so that I can explain the idea of observable. So I created this type here on line 13, which is just a simple type. I assign it to an object literal where I define the type of data that our subscription or observable is going to be emitting. So I created a new observable. As you can see here, I'm passing in the new keyword and an observable and I pass in the type of data that this observable is going to be emitting. Remember, you use observable when you need to emit a stream of data or just some data. It doesn't have to be necessarily a stream and it's asynchronous, which means it's not code blocking or it's not going to block the code and wait until the observable is resolved. And in our case, that would be the HTTP request that we're making. So that means that whenever we call those functions in the service, they will not block the code until the request comes back. That's what the asynchronous means. It means that even if the code is not resolved or the observable is not resolved, it's not going to block the execution of the code. What it's going to do is it's going to create a subscriber. As you can see here, we're creating a subscriber that's emitting information or data. And then every time the subscriber emits a data, in our case, once we get a response back from the server, then anyone who is subscribed to this observable will be notified with that data. So you can see I'm creating this observable here. And if I scroll up a little bit and you can see it's coming from reactive extensions of JavaScript or RxJS. And if I go back to the user service and you can see this observable here that this is returning, it's coming from the same packet. So observable is going to emit information or data, right? So this is the observable. I create the observable. I say, Hey, this observable is going to return HTTP response, which is simply an object with a code. That's a number and data that is a string. And then I pass in this callback function, which is the subscriber. And that's the subscriber that's going to emit. Now you have to understand this subscriber is not this subscriber here that's happening here. Okay. So whenever we say subscriber, we're saying that whatever we're going to subscribe to they're the subscriber. So we're going to be subscribing to this observable here. And that's the subscriber that's sending the data every time, as you can see here, and then we we're subscribing to the subscriber. So every time this subscriber up here emits this data, as you can see here on those three lines, then this guy who subscribed to this subscriber will be notified with the data. Okay. So what's happening here is once I create the observable, I say, Hey, log this information and then send this data. So whoever is subscribed to this subscriber will receive this data first and then this next data and then this other one. So you can think of this as a stream, like we're sending one and then we send another and then I make the code or this subscriber wait for three seconds. And then I send another one and then I complete the observable. Now this is pretty simple, right? An observable is going to emit data and we create it using the new observable. There are many other ways that you can uh, create this. And then I say, Hey, emit this data, emit this data, emit this data, uh, and then emit this error, but we're going to comment this for now. Uh, because when you send an error, then the whole thing just shut down. So it, it gets completed. So we don't want to do that yet, but I'm going to show you how this error is going to come into play here in a second. So we're going to emit these three uh, pieces of data. In our case, those are HTTP response, and this is just a dummy HTTP response. And then once we emit these three HTTP responses, we're going to wait for three seconds and then we're going to emit another one. And then we're going to complete the stream here. As you can see on the subscriber, I'm calling the complete. Okay. So this is the observable. This is what can be observed by someone. So now we're someone, right? Let's assume that we're someone. We want to be notified whenever this data is emitted. Okay. So what we're going to do is on this observable that we created, you can see here, this is all the observable. All of this is here. 
we're going to subscribe to it, which means we're going to subscribe to it so that we can get notification whenever there is something happen here, either on error or next to send the data or if it's complete. And those are the three callbacks that you get with an observable. So you get the next, you call next whenever you need to send the next data or the next piece of data. You call error whenever you need to send an error. In that case, we can, we're not going to send the error um, just yet. And then here I'm just setting a timer so that I can send the next HTTP response after three seconds. And then after that, I'm just going to complete the stream, which is going to stop everything saying that we're done. And down below in our subscription, we can also listen to those three different types of event, right? So that's going to be the next for whenever a new data or the next function up here is called. So whenever this function is called, this is going to fire because we're observing uh, this observable, right? We're like someone who is interested in this observable, which is why we subscribe to it. So whenever they emit a piece of data, this function is going to be called with the data. As you can see here, we're passing the data here. So the data is being also passed in here. And we know it's going to be an HTTP response. So we typed it because we're using TypeScript. We can give this a type. And then if there's an error, we're going to get the data. In that case, it's going to be any type. And then we're going to console the error. And then once the complete is called, then we're going to say, okay, we're done. Um, the, this observable is no longer sending or emitting data for now. The other important thing is if there is no one who subscribed to this observable, this code will never run. And that's the biggest thing that I want you to understand in this. So if I go ahead and open the uh, terminal and I'm going to go ahead and run the application, right? So this is an Angular application. I can just do ng serve. Okay and we're gonna just run the application. We're gonna let that come up once it comes up and then now I'll, I'll come back so that we can continue. All right, so now the application is running, right? We can access it using localhost 4200. So I'm gonna open my browser and then you can see I'm already on localhost 4200 and I'm just gonna press enter and you can see we have the application running. So let's go into the console. So you just right click and go to inspect and I'm gonna bring this over a little bit and we, we are interested in the console and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that we can see what's going on here. So you can see that we get the information that we're expecting, right? Inside subscriber, we get the first data being emitted, second one, third one. And then you can see here, we have this done here. And then we have this last one after three seconds and then this done after the subscription. So what's happening here, if I go back, so first we got this and then we got this three and then we got this because the code is asynchronous it didn't stop here and wait for three seconds it jumped straight to line 25 and then it, it printed out this on the console as you can see here we got the first one the second one the third one and then it prints the line it didn't wait three seconds to print this even though this line is after the the one that's gonna wait for three seconds as you can see this line is here so it didn't wait, but then once it was time, it went back up here to send this data again and then complete the observable. So that's an important thing you have to understand. Observable is asynchronous, which means it doesn't block the code execution and it will come back to do whatever it needs to do if it's on a timer, for instance, in this case here. And the reason we're getting this data is because we're subscribing to it. So another thing I wanna show you is this. So if I go here, which is where we're subscribing to this observable that we just created up there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and then comment it out. So I'm gonna select everything, control forward slash. Okay, so now it's commented out. But this code is still here. You can see we get no errors and then everything is good. But now if I go back and well, the app refresh, but I'm gonna do it so you can see, you see we get zero logs. We didn't get anything. And that's because there's no subscriber. So if there is no subscriber or nobody is interested in this data, then it doesn't even run, which means that all of these logs we didn't get, this entire code didn't do anything. It was just sitting there because there was no one who subscribed to it like we did here, because there's no one interested in this data. So that's what you need to understand here. If you don't subscribe to this subscriber, like you can see this is a subscriber, if nobody subscribed to it, like we're doing here, then it's never gonna fire, which means this code that we have here, if nobody subscribed to them, you can see they're returning observables, then they never gonna fire. Like this code is never gonna run because there's no subscriber. So we have to subscribe to those observable 
and then wait for the next. I'm just going to uncomment this so you can see. And then once we subscribe to this observable, we have to wait for the next callback or the first callback to get the data whenever the observable resolves. So that's the whole idea with observable. And this is just a really quick overview. Observables are very powerful. And just before I forget, let me show you what happens if we send an error. So if we send an error, let me see if I can bring the browser. You can see we get the three pieces of data and then we get the error and then the subscriber and then the observable just tap. OK, so whenever we have an error, then the complete is not going to be called and it's just going to throw an error and then stop right there. You can see we have the error message as well because we're also listening on that error message right here. OK, so we say whenever the next is called or whenever we get the data, which is going to be these lines right here, give us the data, which is what we're doing here. And then if there is an error, which is when the subscriber called the error and then pass in some data for the error or just nothing because you don't have to pass any data, then we're going to call this function on our subscription. And when they call the complete up here, then we're also going to call our complete here and then we can do any cleanup work that we need to do here. So the same idea is going to apply to those functions. So whenever we need to get the data from those functions, we know they're observables because they're not going to resolve immediately. That's why their observables are asynchronous, which means they're non code blocking. That means they're not going to block the code. However, that doesn't mean we're not going to know when the data comes back. And that's the whole point of subscribing to those observables because we need to know when the data comes back from the server. So whenever the data comes back, this observable is going to emit the HTTP response. In our case, we're emitting three, four um, pieces of information or three items. But for the uh, HTTP call, we're only going to send or emit one piece of data, which is going to be the entire HTTP response itself. So let's take a look on how we can subscribe to those observables and get the data back whenever the data is resolved or whenever the server sends us the response back and then we get the response. So I just show you in the example that I was using to explain observables to you that you have to subscribe to the observable so that you can be notified whenever the data is resolved or whenever the observable emits a new piece of data or an item. So remember in our service, we have this uh, function where we create an observable and then we send the request over. So the get function here that we're using to fetch the data, it's returning an observable, which is why the entire function is also returning unobservable. So the same way we have to subscribe to this observable. So in, in our user component where we want to retrieve this data and maybe show it to the user or manipulate it in some way, we need to subscribe to this observables. And in our class, we're going to call the service and then call this function. And then we're going to do exactly what I just showed you in the example. So we're going to call subscribe and then we're going to call the next function. In this case, we're setting the name of this as the response because we know it's going to be of type HTTP response. We could have named it HTTP response, which is an array of users, or we could have just named it users because we know it's going to be an array of users. And then we're going to assign that response to some field that we have in the class. In that case, we have a users field. So we're going to set this field to the response. Now, another thing you have to understand is whenever you use the HTTP like this with Angular to make the HTTP request by default, uh, Angular or the HTTP client is going to map the body of the response to the type of data that you specify when you send the get request or whatever request that you send. So if you want to see the actual HTTP response, then you have to pass in a flag and I'm going to show you how to do this. But as you can see down below, we're doing exactly what I showed you in the example, which is we subscribe and then we're listening to the next. In our case, that's going to be the response and then the error, which is the second one. And then the complete, the complete doesn't take any parameters because it doesn't send any data. It's just another function call so that you know that the observable is done emitting data for now or for the moment. So this is what we're going to be doing in the user component so that we can wait for the HTTP request to go over the network and then come back to us. And then once it comes back to us, then we can use that data to show on the UI.